It's great to be here. Uh, uh, this is a really amazing time to be talking about compute infrastructure and data centers. And you know, the, the, the AI revolution has really changed the trajectory. So I'm really excited to be here to talk about some of that. Let me first give a very brief introduction about OCI. Uh, OCI stands for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, in case you're wondering. Uh, we started uh, in 2017. Uh, we launched our you know, public cloud, and we've been growing ever since. In 2019-20 timeframe, we launched our uh, Exadata cloud service. Um, as part of that, we actually used uh, you know, underlying RDMA technology that powered our you know, premium database service. And that actually you know, became a foundation for OCI in many ways. We learned the RDMA technology, if you will, and the cluster networking technology pretty early on. And till today, we have been building on that experience, both from engineering, design, and the operational perspective. 2021, we, you know, we launched a, something called multi-cloud, where we essentially take OCI and uh, build that in one of, our, one of the other hyperscalers data center, lock, stock, and barrel. Right? So this is essentially like you know, OCI inside somebody else. And the idea here is that our fundamental philosophy uh, with OCI is that we don't want to ask customers to come to where you know, our public data centers are, public regions are. We want to take our cloud to where customers are. That's our goal, right? Whether it's on-prem data center or if they are already you know, have their presence in one of the other hyperscalers, we want to take our cloud to them so that you know, the customers can access OCI services while also using other services, whether it's other cloud services, other hyperscalers, or their on-prem services as well. And then in 2023, I'm, as I'm sure everyone knows, the AI infrastructure search started. And you know, we started building out uh, our cluster network capabilities, um, you know, GPUs, superclusters, the RDMA technology. Uh, and in 2024, we announced Zetascale OCI supercluster, which is, you know, at that time, as far as I know, that is one of the largest superclusters uh, there was. Uh, it supported more than 130,000 GPUs at that time. And then, you know, recently we announced a whole slew of gigawatt-style, you know, superclusters um, for a variety of customers in U.S. as well as in uh, across the globe. Now, along with that. You know, we have been partnering very closely with you know, OCP and other open standards, uh, and you know, our participation has been growing. We, we started engaging on ORV2 back in 2021. Uh, we started adoption of you know, the OCP ORV3, uh, and we have you know, already shipped many servers that are aligned from a design perspective with ORV3. Now, this year, we have substantially increased our engagement with variety of open initiatives, OCP initiatives, uh, and work groups. And there's a good reasons for that. I'll get to that in a minute. Now, uh, as I mentioned, at OCI, our fundamental philosophy is to take our cloud and take it to where customers are, as opposed to you know, as asking them to come where we are. And that's one of the reasons our global footprint is phenomenal. We have you know, probably one of the highest number of you know, public regions and we are continuing to launch more, and re more, more regions. And this is, not, this is excluding you know, the dedicated regions, as we call them, where we actually take our OCI and build it in customer's premise. Now, that brings me to the main topic of conversation. We are in an age where we are completely redefining the cloud infrastructure. I've been in the cloud infrastructure game for probably 20 years now. Um, I've never seen such a rapid change in such a short amount of time. This has been phenomenal. And it really has to do with AI. The AI infrastructure build out drives a whole new game around power, around energy generation, around uh, cooling, around data center build out, the size of the data center build outs, the, to the network size, the density of network, to the compute density, the cooling technology, all the way up to the software software systems on top of it. It is complete reimagination of everything. Now, why is that? Now, if you think about, you know, let's say you're in you know, San Jose City, you know, the total power consumption of you know, the city is you know, slightly less than one gigawatt. 
Now, we are in the process of building many data center campuses where the data center campus itself is consuming you know, more than a gigawatt, if you will. Right? So and we have announced many of them. The scale of that is staggering. And the implications are phenomenal as well. Now, these gigawatt campuses, and Ian mentioned you know, one, of the, one of the campuses that we are you know, build, building in uh, with close partnership with NVIDIA as well. Uh, you know, it, it goes into you know, many gigawatts, if you will, across all the you know, data center campuses we're bu building, and it's really millions of GPUs, and it's truly unprecedented scale. So if I were to step back and you know, observe some of the key characteristics of you know, the AI infrastructure, I would call out a few things. The first is scale. Now, if you look at the, the rate of progress, you know, the size of the superclusters that you know, OCI has been building out has been growing at a phenomenal rate. We you know, started off with small. Back in the day when we did Exadata RDMA cluster, it was much smaller. But with GPUs, with the AI infrastructure, it's grown in a staggering way. And you know, la as last year, we announced the 130,000 GPU uh, Zeta scale supercluster. And you know, the networking speed has all, also been growing at a phenomenal rate. You know, the last you know, nine years, it's gone 80x, if you will, from 10 gigs to 80 gigs that we're delivering to a single GPU. So that's, again, been a phenomenal uh, progress, if you will. Now, why is the scale important? The reason for that is when you actually have, particularly for AI workloads, when you have a large cluster compared to a small cluster, the benefit of that is disproportional. When you actually have a 10x you know, size supercluster, the benefit is way more than 10x for somebody who wants to do large scale training. And even these days, even with agentic AI, you actually have inferencing that really needs to be in a very consolidated location. And they can actually take advantage of very large superclusters as well. So it's both for training as well as for agentic AI. The size of these superclusters and the size of these data, data center campuses matter. Now, the second thing uh, that I would call out as a very important thing, and this may not be very obvious, is speed. And the speed is, you know, if, you may not realize the implications of it, but it actually has significant implications in terms of how we think about supply chain, manufacturing, quality control, uh, transportation logistics, you know, a whole bunch of things that change. Now, why is that speed matters? The reason why speed matters, and to be clear, when I say speed, I'm talking about speed of delivery. I'm not just talking about performance, right? So the speed of delivery in terms of you know, how quickly we, we build out our data center capacity, how quickly we are and reliably we are able to you know, populate that with you know, the data center equipment, power equipment, cooling equipment, you know, cable up the uh, uh, network cables, build the network, land the GPUs, and deliver to the customer, that pace is absolutely critical for our customers. Because the faster our customers get access to GPU capacity, it literally you know, drives market leadership for them. So they absolutely are counting on OCI for very fast delivery. And that actually brings me to the importance of open standards and OCP. Now, when you actually build out at such high scale, while also prioritizing speed, we actually need to rethink a whole bunch of things. And some of these are, you know, admittedly, a little boring, logistics. But if you have common standards and specs, and there's a ecosystem of products around it, and there are multiple vendors, multiple you know, manufacturing pipelines, and they're all you know, lined up around the same set of specs and standards, it really gives us a lot more options to scale up and also deliver at a very high pace. Usually what happens is when you actually deliver at very high pace, there's usually some supply chain glitches or manufacturing problems. The yield is low whatever it may be, and then we have to you know, sometimes move to a different design or maybe do move to a different you know, vendor or maybe move to a different manufacturing lines. All of this is really hard when you have you know, proprietary standards. So the open standards is a huge enabler 
for the scale and the speed at which we want to build the AI infrastructure in order to serve our customers and really you know, to bring up the AI world, if you will. Now, going to some specifics, you know, the three main areas that I want to talk about is server, networking, and my favorite, data centers. Uh, let me start with the servers. So the ORV spec, you know, as I mentioned before, we've been adopt we have adopted it. We already have you know, a huge number of uh, compute racks that align with the ORV standards in our data center already running. And we continue to collaborate with the you know, OCP community on that. Uh, there are areas where, particularly in the context of you know, uh, the modern day liquid cool servers, where we actually need more support and more you know, standardization, if you will. Now, I'm calling out you know, a couple of uh, examples here. You know, one is you know, liquid cooling support and you know, uh, more modular liquid cool IO bay uh, support. These are small examples, but really the point is you know, the world is changing. The server design and server requirements are changing, and we need to you know, catch up and make sure that you know, the standards and the specs uh, running at the pace at which we need to innovate. Well, speaking of networking, uh, one of the things that we recently announced is a partnership with NVIDIA uh, that uses OCP-aligned AI fabrics to launch one of the largest superclusters. Now, looking at specifics around networking, uh, we have, uh, you know, we use a variety of OCP standards, if you will, open standards, uh, to essentially operate our hyperscaler. Uh, some of the examples are switch abstraction interface and scale-up uh, Ethernet interface that are quite important. And we, you know, the last one is the LRO and LPO, which is high performance or power efficient optics, which is super important for you know, uh, AI infrastructure. Because at the end of the day, our goal is to, you know, when you have so much you know, power that's available in a data center campus. We want to deliver as much as possible to the customers in the form of GPU power. And we want to use as little as possible for everything else, including networking. So anything that essentially helps us drive, drive up the power efficiency of networking is immensely useful. So, uh, and we, you know, uh, we encourage and we welcome more uh, standardization and participation you know, in these standards, because we believe that this is actually going to be a needle-moving difference in the industry. Now, apart from you know the SI and SU, which is you know those standards are already well defined. You know, if you look look at it closely, SI essentially you know uh, encompasses a bunch of interface in the switch, but it doesn't do all of it. There are other aspects of the switch, for example, where we do want to standardize so that you know, large hyperscalers can effectively use that, uh, such as in-network compute, particularly in the GPU world, uh, as well as optical transport network. And you know, we, we propose that you know, we extend some of these standards around switch interface to encom encompass all aspects of the switch. Moving to power and data center. Uh, one of the key challenges, uh, I was actually going to say, you know, hey, this is a new one, but then Partha already talked about it a little bit, so it's a little bit of a repeat. Uh, one of the key challenges with large superclusters uh, is that it creates unique challenges. And the reason for that is, unlike traditional IT workloads, when you, even if you have a large data center, we typically see you know, the load across different compute racks or compute servers, they're not necessarily correlated. But in AI workloads, particularly with large, large supercluster and training, training superclusters, they tend to have correlated you know, load increases up and down. And this actually causes you know, the load oscillations uh, all, you know, that essentially can be observed at the data center level. When you're talking about a gigawatt data center campus, when the entire data center oscillates, if you will, from a load perspective in a congress, in a synchronous fashion, it can actually cause problems at the grid level or even power generation equipment level. And this actually, you know, is turning out to be quite a challenge, right? And these challenges, you know, we are solving that in a variety of ways. Uh, you know, Ian talked about some of that, uh, you know, uh, 10, 15 minutes back. Uh, you know, at OCI, we are using a variety of techniques uh, for that. But at the same time, 
you know, today there's not a lot of standardization per se around how we deal with load swings and power oscillations. Uh, and, you know, and it would be incredibly useful if we actually, as an industry, we align on a set of standards so that we can drive the standards around you know, various equipment, around you know, UPS, you know, supercapacitors, or battery energy storage systems, and grid itself. Right? And so every state, for example, is you know, sometimes coming up with their own standards. Having you know, a common standard across all of them, and if you can drive that with vendors, as well as grid providers and you know, energy power generation uh, plants, that will be incredibly useful. Now, in addition to that, uh, we also have challenges around uh, the mismatch, if you will, of data center longevity and a rock, rack level longevity. What I mean by that is rack level power uh, consumption or the requirements is evolving. It's evolved from 10 to 100 to 50 kilowatts, and it's going to go to one megawatt soon. Now, when we design a data center, if we designed it for one particular rack size from a power perspective, and then five years later or six years later when we replace them, well, we don't want to be redoing the entire data center, right? So one of the key things that, you know, as a hyperscaler we're facing is how do we design the data center so that we are future-proof as much as possible? And we know this is coming. This is not, you know, a surprise to anyone. And we, you know, this is a key challenge. And again, you know, we welcome more open standards around this. Now, uh, this is a, you know, this is, a, you know, I talked about load oscillations. You know, this kind of shows you know, how some of these load oscillations might happen uh, in a very large, you know, supercluster. Now, in terms of standardization, the call for action here is we need standardization on load oscillation and power oscillations that we can essentially drive with, you know, the, the data center equipment vendors as well as the grid providers. And we need you know, standards in terms of power delivery so that we can future-proof our data center. Uh, and we definitely need, you know, telemetry standardizations as well. I believe yesterday this came out. This is an open letter uh, that Oracle is a you know, participant in. Uh, uh, this essentially calls for a collaboration on AI data center infrastructure standards. To sum it up, so we have, you know, AI infrastructure is a huge leap in terms of how we need to think about servers, networking, and data center and grid. Rack designs, we need to adapt to liquid cooling and high-density cooling, and we need standards for that. Networking, you know, we have a very good set of initiatives around open, you know, uh, open standards. We need that to expand even more and encompass all of the networking aspects in, in switches and whatnot. And data center grid, we are just getting started, frankly. I think there's a lot of opportunity here that will really help the industry go to the next, next stage. At the end of the day, we need velocity and scale. And we fundamentally believe open ecosystem and open standards really help with that. And thank you for all for playing a big role in it. There's a couple of OCP talks. Uh, that are coming up. Thank you for joining me. <laughs>